We opted to go back to Matthew 6, yung tinatawag na disciples' prayer. Some people call it the Lord's Prayer. Diba? Ang importante ngayon, before we start our prayer and fasting, is to know sino bang, anino ba natin dinidirect ang ating mga prayer. Para tayo with prayer. Our Father in Heaven, salamat Panginoon. Uh, that grace is available so that we can approach your throne. Lord, uh, the pandemic is uh, taking its stretch and uh, we are convinced wala na kami duda, Panginoon, that you are indeed in control. Salamat, Panginoon, for this morning and the supply of grace that is ready for us sa maghapon. Will you just uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit? Check our hearts so that uh, lahat ng gawain namin the whole day, even right now, You will take the light. And we pray, Lord, that you uh, search every heart, even those do sa mga uh, will join us uh, replay ng uh, intercede. Check our hearts, Lord God, so that we will be pleasing before you. Cleanse us from any sin that will hinder this prayer. In Jesus' name. Ang sabi dito, our Father in Heaven, at yan ang turo ni, ng Panginoong Jesus, uh, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is a familiar passage and a familiar prayer at that. Uh, I remember distinctly, memoriado ko to kahit tulog, ika nga. Simply because this is this is a prayer that tinuro sa atin uh, in this country when we were young. It is only when you start reading and reading and reading the Bible and uh, can you and I understand what this verse means. Ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng you, you and I are calling God our Father? Ano bang implication yun kapag ginawa natin yun? Una-una, sabi sa verse 48 of the of the fifth chapter sabi ng Panginoong Hesus uh, we should be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect our attitude begins as we address God our father that we want to be like him oh yes we cannot be all powerful and we cannot be all knowing and ever present we cannot be God in that sense but we want to have his character we want to grow up To be like our dad in heaven. Gusto nating uh, uh, makita ng marami na tayo ay kawangis ni Kristo so that they will bring glory to God. And they will utter praises to Him because of that. So since we, we have that desire as Christians na maging katulad tayo ng ating Ama sa Langit, that we think like Him and speak like Him, And we see his perspective uh, as we go through this life. Ano ba dapat ang ginagawa natin? Una-una, it is very important, the Bible tells us. Sabi dito sa verse 6 of the same chapter that we're reading, When you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. You know, the Lord delights our Father in heaven when we come to Him alone, praying in solitude. Just like uh, I'm, a, I'm a father of four, I always delight, take delight. Tuntua ako kapag when, when my kids come to me and they ask questions. Kapag may mga decisions that has to be made, they ask questions. Kapag mayroon silang di maintindihan, they ask questions. And sometimes, I don't even need to answer simply because they just want to have an audience. And that should be our attitude. We just want to have an audience with God mailatag sa paanan niya, sa harapan ng kanyang trono, yung mga bagay na tumatakbo sa ating isipan. Praying in solitude. And the, 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 Jesus himself assured us that the Father who sees in secret, merong reward na ibinibigay. And that will be eternal. And sometimes when you pray for people, they don't need, even need to know that you're praying for them. 
Because the reward is assured whether malaman nila o hindi. Praying in solitude. Another way of putting it is quiet time. It's an essential part of a Christian life. Next. Sabi sa verse 8, Your father knows what you need before you ask him. And that's why it's liberating to be honest with God. Napakaganda na lalapit ka sa Panginoon without pretension. Hindi ka kailangan, hindi tayo kailangan magpunwari. We just approach the throne with all honesty. When you're angry, you tell the Lord. When you're disappointed, you tell the Lord. When you're happy, you tell the Lord. When you have this heartache, you tell the Lord. Because yun ang gusto niya. Hindi, hindi ko kailangang itago sa Panginoon ko anong meron ako. Kasi alam naman niya in the first place. And above all, He knows what I exactly need. He knows what you need. Sometimes we don't know what we need, but God knows. So it pays to be honest with God, acknowledging that He knows all things. Verse 14, sabi, Your Heavenly Father will also forgive you if you forgive others. Nung nananalangin nga si uh, Haring David when uh, he's, he's presenting his sin of murder and his sin of adultery before God. Sabi niya, create in me a clean heart, a steadfast spirit within me. When we come to our Father in heaven, it is always best that we come to Him with a clean heart. It is always best na we present our sins na dapat patawarin. But more importantly, wala dapat tayong unforgiveness in our hearts. As we have been always saying in our congregation, um, we should forgive as fast as we get hurt. The moment we feel that we get hurt, we don't need to to have a process time for it. We just forgive. Why? Because it will lead to bitterness if we don't do that and the devil will play his part. So, always come to the Lord Asking for a clean clean heart. Ano pang gustong gusto ng Ama sa Langit? Sabi niya, look at the birds in the air. They do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns. I was watching a video of birds. And, uh, oh nga, totoo yun. They do not worry. Uh, just recently, we have a small tree dito sa roof deck and uh, we noticed one thing, may ibon na nagtayo ng pugad at uh, nung wala yung mga parents, ika nga, inakyat ko yung puno okay, through a ladder and uh, initially I saw a chick, isa then nung uh, eventually, nung lumaki na and the little chick flew away Then later, nagkaroon uli ng eggs. I saw two. Okay, lagi kong sinisilip yun. <laughs> Kasi I'm curious. And these birds, they just sing every morning. Hindi sila nag-aalala. Parang masyadong maliit yung aking pugad. Okay, they do not look for a... They do not open their closet at sasabihin niyang, wala ko maisuot today. And they, they do not build more and more nests just to secure their future. Sabi ng Panginoon, are you not worth much more than they if the, uh, the Father in heaven feeds them? All the more He will supply our needs. We must pray that we always see our true worth. Ano bang halaga natin uh, sa Diyos Ama because of Jesus Christ? We are very important to Him. Jesus did not die for the birds. Jesus did not come for any other creature except as humans. And now that we have accepted Jesus, yung worst natin, ano bang halaga natin? Let, let, let us explore that. You know, sabi ni Jesus when He was praying that we are loved by the Father in as much as He loves His Son. Yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon sa atin is equal to sa pag-ibig ng Ama sa Kanyang Anak. That's our worth. 
we are caught in between the love relationship of the father and son. And we can experience that. That's why approaching his throne, even though he's a king, he was our Abba, our daddy. Because he loves us the way he loves his son Jesus. At ang proof nun is on the cross. Kasi the church of God was purchased by the blood of Jesus. So yung, yung halaga ng church, that's you and me, is valued just like Christ. Ko anong value ng anak ng Diyos, yun ang value ng kanyang church. Kasi ang pinangbayad para matubusan church is yung anak. And that's very encouraging. In fact, If you really think about it, worrying is crazy. Well, bakit ko gagawin? That's why a, a, a growing Christian begins to understand that worrying, pag dumating, it will come. Just reject it immediately. I don't need to worry because I'm highly appraised. Mataas ang value ng mga taong nananalig sa Panginoong Hesus. Another thing, sa Matthew 11.25, sabi, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. When you come to God, sabi sa Ephesians 3, He can do beyond what you can ask or think. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. He is King. He owns everything. Tinuro sa atin na recently that He is the God of the I am possible. God of the impossible. So, when we come to God, wag natin siyang ilalagay sa kahon. Yet we are honest sa ating mga nararamdaman at ating mga naiisip. Yet at the end of the day, just like King David when he prays, nilalatag niya yung lahat ng nasa puso niya. At the end of his prayer, he corrects and reminds himself yung kanyang doktrinang naintindihan that the one whom I approach is the Lord of heaven and earth. Walang imposible sa kanya. And the reason why we're talking about this is magsisimula tayo ng prayer and fasting. This is the attitude that we should have, the doctrine that we should carry. Next part of that, it says, Hallowed be your name. Some translation will say, Holy, He is sacred. His name is set apart from all the rest. And another way to put it is every single time that we pray, His name must be glorified. Sabi dito, let your uh, light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Lord seeks glory in everything. In everything. The heavens declare His glory. The beasts, the animals declare His glory. Ayo lang mga tao ang most often we refuse to give Him glory. But since you and I are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, ang buhay natin ay dapat nagbibigay kaluwalhatian sa ating Ama sa Langit. Sabi ni Jesus when, um, uh, when He was speaking to His disciples during Lord's Supper, the final hours bago siya i-arrest, sabi niya, whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Inulit niya yon sa verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Why? Because God answers, yun ang promise niya. And when He answers, ang desire ng Ama sa Langit is He be glorified. Hallowed be your name. Maiangat ang pangalan niya. And this is a beautiful promise. When we pray and we expect answers, hindi dapat mag-glorify si Lito o kung sino man. It should not add glory to me or to you. It should add glory to him when he answers. That's why do natin aayusin ang ating panalangin in terms of yung hihilingin ko pag sumagot ang Panginoon, he will get the glory. I won't take any part of it. And that's a good attitude when we come to the Father. Now, ano ba ibig sabihin ng praying in His name? Okay, sabi sa Psalm 
you have magnified your word according to all your name. What is most interesting is this. The name of God is as, as heavy in terms of weight as His word. Gusto mong makilala ang pangalan ng Diyos? Tingnan natin ang kanyang salita. Because His word is as magnified as His name and His name is as magnified as His word. His word represents everything about God. That's why when Jesus came, the word became flesh. Everything that is according to His word is also in His name and vice versa. So when you pray according to Jesus' name, we are actually praying according to His Word. That's why when you read the book of Psalms, see David is actually praying according to the character of God, according to the magnificence of God, the majesty of God. And he always does it, he always did it uh, in a manner that it exalts God at the end of the day. Salamat at naisulat ang book of Psalms. And lastly, sabi, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if you notice, we haven't seen his throne. Because Jesus said, uh, the, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you in our hearts. When he comes back, he will set up his physical throne. He will sit in Jerusalem for a thousand years. And itatapo niya si Satan and all the demons in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And he will rule the earth for a thousand years. Meanwhile, habang hindi pa nangyayari yun, the kingdom is an invisible kingdom. He is seated in our hearts. The kingdom of God is within you. And this kingdom is growing. It's growing in righteousness, in peace, and joy in the Lord. And as we share the gospel, it's expanding. And more and more people are have, having the righteousness of Christ, the peace of Christ, and the joy in the Holy Spirit. Sabi nga ni Apostle Paul, as uh, mga Christians in Ephesus, he was praying, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. Ano pinagpipray niya? Look at the prayer of the Apostle Paul. That he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in the inner man, where Christ is seated. Pray bakit? So that Christ may dwell in your hearts. He's not asking God to save the Ephesians. They're already saved. But the key word here is the, the, so that Christ will make his home. Meaning as we grow in the Lord, as we grow in the inner man, as we are strengthened, kumbaga, eh, pag tayo bumibisita sa bahay ng iba, we must feel at home. Sabi sa atin. And to make Christ feel at home, quote-unquote, okay, we must grow in this faith. We must... Uh, we must experience the strength and uh, the power of the Holy Spirit in our, uh, within us. Pan, anong itsura nun? We are rooted and grounded in love as we grow in the faith. So, that kingdom must be sought after. Ang isang Kristiyanong lumalago sa pananampalataya, nagiging priority ang kingdom. If you will read uh, Matthew 6, yung... In business, worrying about the temporal things. Kasi worrying means we are directing ourselves to prioritize getting the physical things, the temporal ones. We must seek His kingdom. And it's synonymous with seeking His righteousness. We must practice obedience. Ito ang sabi ng Panginoon, uh, you don't need to worry about what you need. Okay, I will surely add them. The kingdom is the priority of someone who approaches the throne of the Father. Pray in this way, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is our, uh, our prayer as we approach the throne. Let us pray, uh, begin to pray. 
And uh, let's ask God for the many things that are in our hearts. The slides will be shown on screen and uh, we can pray together. Brother Ryan, you can start with an attitude of worship. Let us worship Him for who He is, the King who is seated on the throne. And even though He is on a lofty place, He is also in the hearts of those who are humble and contrite. Na nagpapakumbaba sa paano na kanyang trono. At ang ating desire as we begin to pray is to lift up His name, to bring glory to His name, to to exalt he, uh, who he is. Go ahead and worship. Confess your sins. Especially the seed of prayerlessness. Give thanks. Remember His goodness to you. And in the next slides, we will present our request to Him. Just Lord to be dependent on you. That we dare not be confident in ourselves, only in your spirit. Cause us to bear fruit. fruit, much fruit. Place this burden in our hearts, Lord, to share the gospel and disciple others and teach them to do the same. take it seriously yung sinabi mo Panginoong Jesus that we make disciples of all nations cause us to multiply we come to you God Asking the Lord of the harvest to send more workers to your harvest field. Even as most of us are in Quezon City, we pray, Lord, that your gospel will creep into every barangay, 142 of them in Quezon City the gospel be preached. Bible studies will be established in every home. 
begin with the men of every home. We pray, O oh Lord, that the leaders of every family will be leading the charge in discipling the children, the next generation. May we be an influence to the Queso City government. May the things we do, wherever we are situated, kung sa mga barangay kami, Panginoon, will honor you. Open doors, Lord God. We may share the gospel to everyone in this city especially in those who are in government, raise up gospel shares in the Quezon City government, Lord. Raise up disciples who will multiply. We volunteer. Send us. We humble ourselves before you. Your this near, Lord. Lord, would you just unite your people, having one mind that you have laid down in your word how to select a leader of a country, a leader in the Senate, a leader in every city, in every municipality, even in every barangay. Papano mamili, Panginoon? We pray that. Your children will seek your word and your face. We dare not trust in our connections. We pray that we be not deceived by those who are corrupt. Rebuke them, Lord. And we pray that the gospel will go viral. In our barangay, in, in our city, in NCR, and even the rest of the country. Lord, we pray that you forgive our sins. Forgive the corruption, Lord God, in this country. Forgive the immorality. Forgive that we even enjoy watching on screen those who are promoting immorality. Forgive the greed of this country, O oh Lord. Your word says we were like them. As such, we are one of them before. But you have cleansed us. You have justified us. You have sanctified us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray, Lord God, that you use us so that others will know you. Heal, heal our land, Lord. Lord, we find no hope in men. But only in you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Our heavenly Father, we just praise you, exalt your name. And we want you to be honored sa lahat ng aming gagawin, especially during this time of prayer and fasting. Let none of us be pretentious. Let none of us seek something that is selfish. We pray, Lord God, that we'll be fervent in prayer. We will be feasting on your word. Even though we 
we reject food. We pray that we will take delight in sitting at the feet of Christ. Praying to you. And even listening to your voice. We pray that the Holy Spirit will remind us of the word that you have already taught us. We pray for our family members. Protect our children. For they are highly influenced by their environment, especially the internet. Their friends. May our children be influencers of their friends. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen them, Lord God, by the power of your Holy Spirit. That they will only do things that gives honor to you. We pray, O oh Father, that you strengthen the head of every household. As the priest and prophet of every home. As we are the authority of every home. We pray that you strengthen us. You are our Lord, and we are your servants. And as we exercise authority over our family members, we pray, Lord God, that they will see the majesty of Christ in us. That words from your scriptures will come out of our mouth, not in a preaching manner, but in the daily things that we do, in the day-to-day -day casual conversation with our family members. Let your words come out of our mouth. We pray for every wife that they will support the husband that they were given, that they have chosen to love and not seek to be above him. Not that they are inferior. We are equal, male and female. But just as Christ submitted himself to the death and torture, even though he doesn't deserve it. We pray, Lord God, that all of us will have that attitude of submitting to you and submitting to one another. We pray, Lord God, that this nation will bow down to your throne and accept you as Lord and Savior. We pray for peace in Israel, where your throne will be established for a thousand years. We pray, Lord God, indeed, that you will come and you will do that. Lord, we pray for this pandemic that it will one day cease. We pray, Lord God, for your protections araw-araw. And if you are willing, allow us to meet. Allow us to fellowship with one another face to face without the fear of being infected. Give us wisdom on how to go about these things. For we know, Lord God, that there is much joy when your people come together, whether in small groups or large groups. Lord, dinadalangin namin lahat ito. Because we know you are our Father in heaven who answers, who gives grace upon grace every single day. Your compassion is new every morning. Teach us to be dependent upon you. Not to be lazy, but to understand that everything is in your hands. Our future is settled in heaven. Our citizenship is there. We just pray that we will influence many to follow you as we go through this life. Cause us to grow and cause us to multiply. Lord, this we ask because this is your will in Christ and in his most precious name we pray. Amen.